everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. A bitch is back talking about books. I just went to Disneyland. It wasn't Disneyland, it was California Adventure yesterday, so I just wanted to give a little update that I will be posting a vlog about California Adventure on my vlog channel, which I will put in the link down below. It's probably not going to be uploaded for another, like, five days to a week from now because I have another video that I was going to post on that channel before the Disney one and I still have to like edit and do all that stuff for that one. So yeah, just like a little update if you want to check out my vlog channel, you can go into the link in the description. But this is my book channel, right? And today what we are going to be talking about is the last book, the final book to the Twisted series, Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. I was so excited for this book to come out. I was waiting months for it to come out. It was one of the most anticipated reads for me this year when it comes to new releases um, because I felt like with every single book that Anna Huang was coming out with, it went from being super mediocre aka almost hating the book and kind of having a hate video for the first book, Twisted Love, to slowly with every single book, me really, really loving the series. And I was like, damn, Miss Anna Huang, she really improved as a writer and, like, as a character builder type of situation. So I was like, since every single book has just been getting better and better, like, I love Twisted Games, and then I loved Twisted Hate, I thought Twisted Lies was gonna be that bitch. I thought this book was gonna be, like, insanely amazing. And I think I did myself a disservice by having that thought because I was a little bit disappointed because it wasn't my favorite book of this series as a whole. And I will have another video talking about my whole thoughts on the entire series as a whole. But for this one, I'm just going to do a review on Twisted Lies. So like I said, it wasn't my absolute favorite of the series. I would say it was still a pretty good read. It is one of the most slow burn books out of the entire series, and it follows Stella and Christian's relationship. So Christian is a dark, handsome, brooding man, aka like every single one of Anna Huang's characters, or most romance heroes honestly but he's a dark brooding billionaire who was Reese's friend from the second book Twisted Games and he is the owner of this security company and also owns a lot of real estate aka like he owns this apartment build building that Stella lives in and who Stella is is an influencer she posts a lot on Instagram and the beginning of the book it like goes through different tropes like through each book it's kind of insta lovey so Stella's an influencer she lives in Christian's building and Christian has just like over time Stella and Christian don't know each other at all but she lives in the building that Christian owns and they'll see each other in passing every now and then but Christian always had an inkling of liking Stella, being attracted to her. And he's really, really possessive from the jump, which kind of annoyed me in the way that, like, he was saying these things that we all, when we read romance books, like, oh my god, you're mine, you know, shit like that, blah, 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 blah. He was saying that when he's only had, like, one conversation with her, and I felt like that to me, I don't know, it was so weird. Like, he got really, really possessive, which, you know, it's a it's a fictional boy, it's a fictional romance, um, all the red flags turn green, you know? We would love, but I just felt like it felt so off because he didn't even know her besides the one conversation and was just kind of lusting after her. And so I was getting very much twisted love energy from that and I was like, that's kind of like, I don't know, like I don't know how I feel about that, whatever. So it was very insta-lovey um, because Christian was always attracted to Stella and would always do these like nice things like he made Stella's apartment like super, super cheap rent even though she would have paid an insane amount of money to live in the type of apartment that she was living in in Washington DC I think it is like super expensive but because he kind of liked her she got it for basically almost free he was just like oh you can you can like water my plants and 
the apartment is gonna be discounted but on top of that he does own a security company and he's like really into like hacking and shit and has all of these dirt on like really high public figures and stuff like that so what happens is that Stella in the beginning of the novel she's trying to get up to a million followers on Instagram because there's this like brand deal she wants to do with this company that she loves and by having that million followers on Instagram so when she hits the million you know like she thought it would improve her chances of getting the brand deal so what she does is that this is a fake dating book Christian and Stella start to fake date and and Christian only agrees to this because he kind of likes her and feels really possessive over her and they start this fake dating relationship saying like oh like we'll just post together um every now and then because a lot of people on social media they love when their influencers like that parasocial relationship they love it when they start like getting to relationships and stuff and then people like to dig deep start to follow these people that they probably don't even know etc like you know how it is you know how social media is so that's Stella so that's basically how the book starts it starts out fake dating romance and then it kind of delves into growing more which is where the slow burn part of it is and then after that Stella has a stalker right and then this gets into like the second part there's like a three acts right in books or in general usually in like movies film whatever so the first act was like oh they get into this fake dating etc etc rising action the second act oh they're starting to fall for each other but also there's like this new conflict that comes up where Stella has a stalker and that stalker is like very dangerous and is like sending Stella notes to her and really scaring her and so Christian being kind of the perfect guy for Stella in that way owns a security company and ha and basically is like this protector of Stella and helps her out and tries to catch the stalker and like find out who it is and goes through all these resources to like catch him and find him and make sure Stella's okay and stuff like that which is really romantic I will say that I really liked that about this book it delves into fake dating to being protective and then it just kind of goes from there so that's kind of like the really long synopsis of what I'll give this book. I'll say the tropes that this has. So it's Guy Falls First. Christian, he falls first. Um, It's insta-love, basically, aka lust. The book kind of starts in the middle just because the fake dating aspect, I guess, brings them together, but nothing ever really happens within their relationship and their connection until basically halfway through once the stalker kind of comes back the beginning is pretty slow the aspects that i loved about this book was a couple of scenes so one i loved the traveling scenes so when christian was in hawaii with stella it was so good like that whole aspect when they were both in Italy together that was also a really good part of this book like when they went out and actually connected I feel like those parts of the book really really stood out to me another thing that I liked about this book was the characters were pretty well done like you understood their internal things like what's going on in there especially Stella I feel like Christian not as much like you didn't really he was kind of giving Alex all of the female protagonists in this whole series are really strong characters in the way that like they were fully realized but the male love interest all kind of felt similar to each other except maybe Josh I feel like Josh really stood out in that you could see his trauma and why he was the way he was and etc etc right but that's besides the point I think Stella as a character was very very strong and Christian like medium strong like he was a pretty developed character but also kind of like copy and pasted from like every other male love interest in this entire series but I can whatever there was a lot of things that I could re relate to Stella about she has like a struggling home life and this is there's this uh, one scene that I will actually really really praise Anna Huang for for actually finally putting a scene that is show don't tell storytelling which is the the family dinner scene when Stella has dinner with her family and Christian is there because Stella throughout the entire book up to this point she doesn't like her family she is the younger sibling and she feels like anything that she does is never good enough for the family she's an influencer but her family is kind of like 
lawyer, politicians, that's her family. They want her to work in those kind of fields, in, in politics, in law. Her sister and her bicker a lot because it feels like they're always competing. They have, during dinners, they have like accomplishment game, which is like basically telling the table about like what you accomplish. And she just doesn't feel loved, you know, in that sense. And she would say this throughout the book, but you don't feel it until you hit that family dinner scene and I thought it was so well done because you s felt the frustration as a reader for this family not empathizing with Stella, her situation, her wants, her needs, and also including Christian in that and seeing Christian play into it and protect Stella, not protect necessarily, but defend Stella, kind of show that Christian is very appreciative of who Stella is as a person and the reasons why he loves her. And you also got to see for yourself as a reader why the family is so shit. Like why Stella's family is like, why Stella does not like her family. And to that, I really liked that. And I will praise Anna Huang for that. In general, I think the writing is kind of okay as well. This book was kind of, in general, okay. Anna Huang, I think, personally, I my opinion is that she has a problem with language in the way that every single book that she's written uses almost the same exact sentences a lot. In general, I feel like I saw a TikTok about this too. That all of the, like, men in this book are into the same things. And I saw this TikTok that was saying like, oh, it's so funny because like all these guys, like Christian really does not like Josh from the third book from Twisted Hate. Like he does not like Josh at all. But they were, it was so funny because it's like they're into the same things. I don't know. This book is kind of like a mixture of Fifty Shades of Grey and The Maddest Obsession. And that's not only because his name is Christian. It was giving billionaire into like dark brooding. It was like that, you know? It mixes with the mask obsession in the way that it's kind of a slow burn. It goes for a long period of time. The guy falls first, you know, things like that. The thing that I didn't like about this book was that it was lacking tension, which is one thing that I felt. Another thing I feel is that Christian as a character felt really confusing because Christian says over and over again, I don't believe in love. Love is not something for me. Like, he says this line, something along the lines of love makes people weak because it made Josh, it made Reese, it made Alex weaker because they're not, they were putting the love they had for their significant other above their work. And he says that he wants Stella, but doesn't call it love. Like, he doesn't want to say the word love. Like, he's scared of that word, love, right? But then also, he did have that explanation of, like, the reason why he doesn't believe in it is because it makes people weak. But then also, as the book progresses, it's, like, so annoying because it's, like, you just don't like the word because his actions say differently, right? His actions are that he is putting Stella above his work or Stella above other things in his life like he's prioritizing Stella which he considers something weak you know what I mean and even though he doesn't call it love wouldn't he still look down upon himself for not putting his ambitions first and putting quote-unquote not love first you know what I mean like I that was really confusing to me and I just felt like they were trying to create an internal conflict within Christian that just didn't really make sense as much and wasn't really well done I did feel like there was a lack of tension in this book that you didn't really feel the love and like the tension and the wanting and the pining which is like oh my favorite shit in a romance novel like oh I love pining I literally like I eat that shit up you didn't feel it even though I think it was a pretty well paced book I think when it comes to the stalker storyline the build up to the stalker was good and I think it was a much better build up for sure than Twisted Love because that I don't know like I'll hit on the book all day. Anyways, it was a slow and consistent build, you know? Like, every other chapter, they were putting in more clues as to who the stalker was. Or even though it was kind of out of the blue, you know, like, who the stalker was, I'm not gonna spoil it. They were still consistently talking about the stalker and consistently mentioning it, saying, like, who could it be, you know? Like, there was that sense of mystery, and it always was leaving the reader to remember we have a stalker, we need to figure out who it is, and I really liked that as well. The one thing I will say, 
And this will kind of be my last point because I did kind of ramble. This is kind of a messy video. I'm very sorry because I kind of read this a while back and I'm like trying to remember and gather my thoughts. The thing that I really did find hilarious or an observation that I made in this book was that Christian is an acts of service ho. Like that is his love language if I ever did figure it out. He is an acts of service ho because he will remember things about Stella or things that Stella said and will and it will come back and oh I just love acts of service when they're thinking about you and doing something for you and he just does everything for her in a way that I don't know I just he's an acts of service ho. That's all I will say. Obviously, all of these men are physical touch love language, but Christian is acts of service. That is his love language, and I love it. I ate that shit up. In terms of there wasn't really that much smut, differently than books two and three had, like, a lot of smut, or, like, really crazy smut. Also, Christian, like, and Stella, I think they have, like, a voyeurism kink because they're really doing stuff out and about they're, they're doing doing it in the most public of places i'm like damn they really have this like the thrill they ha they take thrill in the voyeurism aspect of things but anyway in total i gave this book a four out of five stars it was definitely the most wholesome of the bunch this couple was the most healthiest of all four of the couples like, they matched each other well, Stella and Christian. Besides Reese and Bridget, I feel like Reese and Bridget are also pretty healthy as a couple. I just feel like there was something missing at the end. So that's why I had to give it a 4 out of 5. One more thing I do want to add to. I loved how much I related to Stella as a character. She is an influencer, but she has social anxiety. Like, she's shy, and it's hard for her to really connect with other people. Or, like, she's an overthink. I'm like, girl, this is literally me. Like stop anyway i love that i related to stella and that she was a good relatable character i feel weird about this book too is that there were so many side plots or like the plot kept like going in different directions which i feel like is fine because it still kept me on my toes like i was still interested but yeah i had to give it a four out of five like it wasn't my favorite of the series like i wasn't like oh my god like obsessed with this book but i did like it was the side plot of mora mara of mara like, I don't know. I just thought that Mara as a character, if you don't know who it is, it's the woman that took care of Stella as she was growing up. It was her nanny. And they have this whole, like, side plot of Mara having Alzheimer's and Stella trying to care for Mara before she dies. Like, that, there's, like, a whole side plot with Mara. But I feel like it was kind of a side thought. Like, Mara as a character. And sometimes they would mention her and I would just think in my head like who is that and then I'd have to try to refresh like oh Mara's the girl with Alzheimer's that's the nanny and I would have to remind myself I felt like that whole side part yes it kind of did a little bit to improve Stella's character development and like build who she was as a like, person and like her like home life but I just felt like that whole side plot was borderline unnecessary because she shows up in the book for a little bit and then you forget about her so then when she comes back again I just don't know what she's talking about and then at the very end okay this is a spoiler but Mara she's sick right so she dies at the end they just say it oh she died two weeks ago I was like what someone you love so deeply shouldn't that be a bigger part of the book they just say it in a sentence or two and say like oh I grieved for a bit and then that's it and then her, that whole side plot's done and I'm like I don't know it just felt borderline necessary sorry I had to add that but I give this book a four to five stars it was okay I think it's a pretty good ending to the series as a whole I loved the epilogue and I love how everything at the very end I love when they bring back all the characters for the ending so I thought that was really good this was the most wholesome of the bunch slow burn wasn't my favorite of the series that's what I will say because it lacked tension and pining and butterflies in my stomach I lacked I personally is when I was reading it lacked butterflies in my stomach and it took me a little bit to like get into so that is why I give it a four to five so yes, thank you so much for watching this chaotic video. It was so long. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.